Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my tips and tricks. This is episode number 3 and my name is Tomzi and in today's episode I'm gonna show you how I make a loop to loop and how I copy paste templates, more than 30 props and more. But first I'll really explain a little bit more about the corkscrews from my previous video because some people were not using the benchmark correctly. Uh, I'll show you again. You can see the first floating platform and the second. If I zoom this in and I place a color bar right here, then you can see here the red colors represent the spot where you should not place it. The orange is acceptable, yellow is decent and green is the best spot to place. You see from the top you have a wider range to place than on the bottom. That's because the angle is getting steeper the further you go down. The angle is still too steep in the green. Try making a new template by placing the center prop a little bit further away from the floating platform. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, now I'll tell you a little bit about the starting angle. And with the starting angle, I mean the angle in which the prop or checkpoint is positioned if you load up a published or a saved race, or if you just create a new race. Now if I place the checkpoint here and the container here, you see this first checkpoint and this prop is in the starting angle. You can use this checkpoint to get your starting angle back. If you turn up a prop in another angle and then go back to the checkpoint, you pick it up and place it again. Now your angle is back the starting angle. The starting angle is important for templates because the starting prop of each template will automatically reset to the starting angle. I'll show you a quick example when I place this container in another angle here and add a few floating platforms just so I can show you what I mean and I create a template out of this. Now when I lock the rotation tab to pitch and then switch the category to dynamic and back. Now the starting prop of each template will go back to the starting angle. And everything that you copied will get turned along with it. And now it's very hard to find exactly this angle again. But sometimes you have to do it twice in order for it to work. It's usually when you turn props in other directions rather than just the world heading. That's why the starting angle is so important, because if you want to continue building in a straight line, you can just use the starting angle, and then you never have to worry about losing the angle. Now remember this for later, because later in the video I'm going to use this trick again. Alright, now I'll show you another way of building on the side than I did in my previous video. This time I'm only going to use the pitch instead of the roll. This time I'm making loopings where the cabin has a benchmark and then placing them one by one. The advantage of this is that you can choose your own shape instead of a perfect circle. Before I place the cabin, I'll place a small ramp like this. And then to get the cabin at about the same angle as the small ramp is. Now I'll place the cabin in this angle. And now I'll make a template starting from the cabin and then the floating platform. Now if I place the first one anywhere and then the second I'll turn until the cabin is straight to the floating platform. And then when it's straight you can place the second. And what I usually do is look at these lines and I place them when they are both equally inside of each other. Okay, now for loop to loops, we have to make an opening so the cars can go through it. Now in front of the opening, we need to have a longer straight part, at least one full car length, preferably a little bit more. 
for the platform after the opening i'll just use the next angle like this this is only for one direction though i'll tell you how to make a two direction loop to loop like the napalm shockwave for another episode for now i'll make it only one direction i'll place the one after the opening like this and then i'll just continue building Now when you go into the shadow, you cannot see these lines anymore. But what you can do is change the race details and then set the time of the day to night. And then when we place a light, which we can find at the machinery, the generator and lamp, you, we can see all the lines perfectly now if we place it right here. And then we can just continue building like this. And we can even add the light to our template starting with the cabin first and then we can just continue building like this now if we build a one-way looping like this what you could do is make the way up really smooth because the way up you want to maintain the high speed but when you go down you get the speed from the gravity anyway so you can make it a little bit steeper there okay now when i finished building i will show you the next tip two hours later and i'm back now i finished building this complete structure that costed me 99 props and now i will show you how i copy paste all of this the reason why it's 99 props and not 100 is because you need at least one prop which we are gonna use as the starting prop i mean the first prop we select when making the template it does not matter which prop it is, but what is important is that you stick it to the ground and then place it on the spot where the complete structure will go into the ground. Now we create a new template and select this prop we just placed first and then add the rest. Now for this to work you need to remember exactly which props you have selected because we will make multiple templates, all starting with the first prop that we placed. So our first template is going to be all of this, until we are kept at 30 props. And then we have to remember where the last prop is that we selected. And then we save this template and make a new one starting with this cabin again. Then when we can't select the prop where we left off straight away, then you can add a prop to the template with, which is within range and then you can reach it. Then we create the second template from all these props until we have 30 again. Now don't forget where we ended our second template, which is here. So we know which props we have left to select. Now for the third template, I'm just going to select the rest until the transition and leave the last looping for the fourth and final template. Okay, now we save the third template. Now we are going to make the fourth template. And we just want to select the props in the last looping, but they are out of range of the cabin. So what we do then is temporary select one just within range. So we can select the one we want to copy. And if we selected the one we want to copy, then we can deselect the temporary prop. And it will still have the prop selected that was otherwise out of reach of the cabin. And now select all the props in the last looping for the final template. And then we save this. And now we have four different templates that all start with the same prop. Alright, now what you should do is save the race. Just in case you forgot to select a prop into any of the four templates. But I'm not gonna bother, I'm just gonna delete all props now. Alright, if I take the first template that I made and turn this template the way I want to place it. Now you see 
I only have to turn one template and all the other templates will turn in the same direction as long as you don't reset the angle. So now you can place this anywhere you want, preferably somewhere where you can stick it to the ground so that if we delete the first prop from each template it will automatically go back to the ground rather than be lifted up in the air. If it's lifted up in the air you're gonna have a hard time to find the right spot where you placed it again. It's not impossible but it's easier if you stick the prop to the ground or another prop if you want it higher up in the air. Now before we place the whole structure you can check if each template will fit the way you want it and if it does it's so easy you just place the first template delete now the pointer has to stick to the ground again exactly on the spot where it was before you placed the first template and now i'll place the second template and again i just delete the first starting prop that we used to start each template and then I place the third and delete again, then the fourth and delete. Now we have this whole structure that is more than 30 props, exactly the way we build it on the airfield, but then on its side. Now I will tell you how I fix the angles after I place the whole structure. Just in case the transitions is not good enough, you can always change the angle later with the template system. Now remembered what I said about the starting angle, we need to use the starting angle in case the angle resets, the angle will stay the same if we use the starting angle, like I showed you earlier in the video. Now when you want to change the angle or position of this prop, we can pick it up by just switching the rotation type first, and then make sure the allow prop stacking is turned off. Then we can pick it up without losing the angle. And then when we want to place it again, turn allow prop stacking off and then we roll it to the desired angle and then we place it. Now to reset back to the starting angle, we make sure the angle is locked and then switch the category to dynamic. Now when I place this barrier for example, let me reset again just in case okay now we lift the prop in the air and then we lock the rotation type and then let the prop stick to the ground again so that if we move this barrier along the side of the barge it should automatically go down and then we place it on the side of the barge right about here now we create a new template then make sure you select the barrier first and then the floating platform and then we save this as a template now we select this template and delete these now you can place it exactly where you want to have it with the new angle and now you can test your new angle until the transitions are perfect well folks, in this episode I showed you how I created loopings with the floating platforms by using the pitch. In the next episode I'm going to explain you how I create a loop-to-loop -loop by using the roll and how I make them go into two directions like I did with the napalm shockwave. And that's all the tips and tricks I have for today folks. If you thought they were helpful, please drop a like. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe for more tips and tricks and my latest jobs, and then I'll see you players later.